Hello and welcome to My Finance Teacher. Today I want to have a sort of a comprehensive video uh, discussing several things, in including the US dollar, uh, what's going to happen with the US dollar, how is it related to some other economic variables like uh, inflation and GDP growth in the uh, US, and how is it um, affecting gold prices and uh, are there some implications for us as investors into gold and gold mining companies. So let's start with this weekly chart of the US dollar. And first, let's try to identify some cycles within this chart. Uh, We're looking for intermediate cycles. Generally, I think they last for about half a year. However, that can vary. So um, the first cycle we can sort of observe is something like this. I'm going to look at this um, seven week RSI, uh, the oscillation between um, sort of being close to oversold and being close to overbought is what I try to judge as indications of uh, cycles taking place between um, counting them from um, oversold to oversold. So there is a cycle here, one can argue has been lasting for about a year. I think we can see a cycle somewhere here where RSI, seven week RSI has oscillated between uh, being close to oversold to being close to overbought and down again. That cycle took place, that's actually less than half a year even, somewhere in the middle of 2015. Another one lasting for just about half a year is between October 2015 and April 2016. We can uh, argue that there is a short cycle somewhere here that's actually less than half a year between April 2016 and August 2016. Then we are going to see a cycle either like this with the following one, like that, that would give us two more cycles that last for about half a year each. At the same time, one can argue that RSI here has never reached close enough to overbought and the price has not actually reached far enough above the 10 week moving average. This blue line here is the 10 week moving average to indicate the upward momentum of the advancing phase of a new cycle. So if there is no indication of that, why can, one can also argue there is a long cycle like this between um, August 2016 and uh, July or August 2017. That's a cycle that's been stretched for about a year or so. And obviously we are in a new intermediate cycle since about August 2017 and um, we're already in uh, overbought territory. Let's try to see what's going to happen with this dollar index going forward, firstly based on uh, our cycle analysis. Right, uh, these cycles are not very regular in terms of uh, their duration but generally one could argue they last for about half a year, although sometimes they can, can be stretched up to a year. So let's say we assume this cycle that is currently going on is going to continue for say half a year. It started in uh, early September or so. If we expect this cycle to continue for about half a year, it should finish sometime in um, early March. It looks like this cycle has already finished its advancing phase. It has been above the 10 week moving average and uh, currently the price is far below the 10 week moving average, which is often an indication that the cycle is already in the declining phase. So if we continue this declining phase for another several weeks into early March, Let's try to have some projections 
using the channel that dollar has been um, in for a while a channel like this there's been a break of this channel over here but I think dollar should move back up in its mean reversion towards the 10 week moving average assuming that the 10 week moving average will move somewhere within this channel dollar is going to move back up towards this 10 week moving average and probably stay somewhere under it since we are in the declining phase of this cycle and if that continues until um, at least early March one would expect the dollar to be close to 89 on the dollar index so to summarize over the next several weeks we should see dollar strengthen a little bit to revert back to the 10 week moving average and continue the declining phase of this intermediate cycle before we move on to gold let's have a look at inflation and we're going to compare this inflation chart that is a monthly chart of inflation with what has been happening with the US dollar in the first half of 2014 the dollar is pretty weak and um, what we see on the inflation chart here is that in the first half of 2014 inflation is relatively high so that makes sense in the second half of 2014 all the way to sort of early 2015 we see this dramatic increase on the dollar index and in the second half of 2014 early 2015 of course inflation is very low so uh, as one would expect the inflation index should um, be inversely correlated with what's happening on the dollar index if dollar is weakening against foreign currencies imports are more expensive then uh, we should observe some sort of inflation in US then uh, in the second half of 2015 and uh, first half of 2016 as well not much is happening with the US dollar at the same time what we see here is inflation is relatively high even when the US dollar is um, not breaking down inflation is very high US dollar is not breaking down we'll uh, come back to this in terms of what it means for um, gold and especially gold mining companies then we see a breakdown in the inflation index in um, the first half of 2017 US dollar is breaking down as well all the way through 2017 so that seems a little bit odd US dollar is going down together with inflation that generally indicates that economy is weakening and if we look here at the growth rate of GDP in 2015 in the second half of 2015 GDP growth rate has decreased all the way down from 5% on a quarterly basis all the way down to 1% by the or even under 1% by end of 2015 moving on not much is happening with inflation it's staying relatively low even though the target for the fed is at two percent uh, what are we going to expect going forward well uh, it looks like a gdp is picking up if that continues if the economy is going to strengthen then that is going to help janet yellen to um, push inflation figures slightly higher what does that all mean for our investments into precious metals well let's recap we expect dollar to continue moving down for another uh, several weeks a couple of months maybe and uh, if GDP continues to strengthen a little we're going to expect some inflation in the future so with the dollar weakening and uh, inflation raising its head one of course would expect precious metals to benefit from all of that just like it has benefited throughout the most of 2016 
when inflation was relatively high. Over the next several weeks into sort of early April, possibly into March, I expect gold to do pretty well. Of course, there is a potential correction over the next couple of weeks as dollar should uh, return back to the 10 week moving average. But once that correction is out of the way, once the short term daily cycle has finished here, we we'll start our new daily cycle and continue the advancing phase of this longer term intermediate cycle in gold, breaking above this previous high at 1360 and this previous high at 1380 and most likely reaching close to 1400. Uh, so that's over the next several weeks, possibly a couple of months. It does look nice. And um, if you would like to see gold at 1400 in, uh, say, middle of March, uh, remember to hit the like under this video. But what's more interesting is what's going to happen with uh, gold mining stocks. Look, in uh, early 2016, when gold increased from um, about 1050 all the way up to 1380, GDX grew from around 13, only 13, all the way up to close to 32. After that, gold has been uh, stuck in this trading range somewhere between 12, 20 and uh, 1300. At the same time, GDX has been stuck over here between uh, 20 and uh, 24, 25. However, what we see now is gold is not that far from this peak at 1380. And we're likely going to go even higher than that peak relatively soon. So what GDX has to do is to catch up because unlike gold, which is close to its peak in uh, 2016, GDX is pretty far from that peak. And when investors realize that gold is out of this range and uh, is breaking through the previous highs, they're going to pile into um, gold mining stocks, which have sort of underperformed relative to their own history in comparison to gold. And that's going to create this very nice opportunity for uh, GDX possibly to move up to um, 30 within uh, the next couple of months. That is definitely quite interesting. From the current price level of uh, 23.7 up to 30, that gives us a very nice percentage gain. Well, what if the economy doesn't pick up? And what if we see some recession that doesn't give us higher inflation numbers? Well, we might experience some recession in the following months, or maybe that could be a year or two or three years away. Uh, however, we are due for a recession since we haven't had one for quite a long time. At the same time, the stock market hasn't had a significant correction for very long as well. So even if the economy doesn't pick up, that I think is still um, not too bad for gold and gold mining companies as in the case of a recession, when stock market is going to plummet, a lot of funds are going to flee from the stock market into safer assets, including precious metals. So in either of those cases, precious metals is, I think, a good investment in the relatively short term over the next several weeks as we continue this advancing phase of the intermediate cycle. And uh, precious metals could be a good investment in the uh, relatively longer term as well, as uh, we haven't had a significant correction in the stock market for quite a while and we are due for one. So um, I wish you luck in your investments. I wish you luck in your trades. I've just given you my opinion on, um, on the US dollar, on the precious metals 
and I invite your opinion in the comments below on the YouTube channel and uh, I also invite you to join me on this Steemit platform. Thanks for your attention.